Hi, I'm David. Welcome to another Scalar 2 video. So today what I want to do is I want to take you through the process of making an entire track using Scalar as my inspiration for my chords, my bass line and my melody. Um, it's how I like to work these days and I find Scalar really useful in not only coming up with the chord progression um, and variations on the progression to make it a little bit more interesting, but also ways to generate melodies and bass lines from that. Um, everything's done within Scalar and I'm using quite a lot of the features such as MIDI capture, um, voice grouping, chord editing and so forth. So I hope you enjoy the workflow. Okay, so this is an actual tune that I'm doing for a client at the moment. Um, and pretty much all of it has been written. Everything that you hear has pretty much come from Scalar. So I wanna talk about how that um, started basically from a simple chord progression and how Scalar's enabled me to really grow it and create um, a nice track effectively. Um, so maybe let's start from the very beginning the very first thing I did was pull up a scalar. Um, here I'm going to just select a C minor scale, okay, and I'm going to bound these areas so I can just trigger them down here from my from my keyboard, okay. And if I was to go a, uh, let's say I decided that I was going to go a simple one, three, um, six, seven progression, one, three, six, seven. Yeah, pretty um, boring and weak and standard on its own, as you can hear. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do is, uh, given that the jump is from down here up to there, you can see the way um, the diatonic chords of the keys of that scale work. There's a, a big jump in voicing. So I'm going to turn on voice grouping, which I, I, I really love to do. It's almost a default for me within Scalar. Just keeps all the keys together and adds a really nice bass note. You don't, you get, there, there are other, um, grouping profiles in here and we'll, we can cover those in a different video but at, at this stage I'm just going to go the, the standard dynamic voice grouping so you can see now when I turn that on and play that one three uh, and I go up here to six and go to the seven it just keep you can see on scalar it's keeping those chords and the notes all together so I'm going to just go away C up to the E, back down to the C, up to the A, and then up to the B flat. Uh, so I'll record that. C minor, E flat major. I'll go back to C minor. And now I'm gonna go up to the A flat major. And right at the end, Okay, so there's my chord progression, pretty straightforward. Now what I want to do is I, I might as well capture those notes because at the moment, it's on its own. Um, I'm gonna, I want to capture the actual, these are the trigger notes obviously to make it easy so I can hit by one, um, trigger the chords by playing one key. But what I'd like to do is um, bring them down here onto a, uh, a patch um, that I've created in contact um, using their ethereal earth library. I play a few notes of that patch. Yeah, pretty nice patch. I want some chords for it. Um, well, I've already got the chords. So I'll open up Scalar, I'll hit the MIDI capture, and I'll capture the actual MIDI of those notes. Okay, great. I'll stop that and I'll drag those notes um, straight onto that contact ethereal patch. There it is right there. So now... So 
So you can see they were the actual chords that Scalar was triggering. Okay, so getting somewhere with my tune. Okay, cool. I want a little bit of variety um, and not always having to play through those chords. So um, we're going to show you how I came up with the next bit. Okay, so here I'm going to open up a new scalar. And here I'm going to go um, choose C minor again. Yeah, it's obviously here in the list. I can search by notes or I can search by scale, but it's right there. Cool. Um, I could use the voice grouping option, but let's say oh, I'm pretty stuck on music theory. I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing. Um, if I wanted to do those chords, what's a, what's a way scalar could interpret those chords differently? So here I'm going to go into voicings, and they are just the same scale, just voiced differently. Okay, and that just gives me different options of how artists may interpret that C minor scale. So you can see playing the same chords, but they all sound different. Here I'm going to go voicing six, okay? Yeah, really nice. And what I like is that there's an extra C minor here. So kind of, there's two variations. So I can use those. So if I was to go the same um, uh, chord progression that I was doing, which was the one, three, six, seven, I could start at this one up top, and I go C minor again, but this time I play the bottom. And now I go to the three. And now I go to the six. I'm up to the seven. And finish back down on the C. So again, same chord progression, but just a nice, interesting variation. Okay, cool. cool. I'll record that. Great, so there you go. So now I've got my chord progression. Uh, let's just solo that. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Um, what I've done now is I've, I've created another ethereal patch, just um, a slightly different one. Um, and now what I'd like to do is move those notes on um, to that same instrument, just so then I've got a variation. So let's MIDI capture what we just recorded. Great, okay, so I'll just stop that and now I will drag that onto that second channel. So they're the actual notes and now we can hear those. We bring those in. And you can see the chords are now triggering that ethereal. Really nice. Okay, cool. So I've got effectively I've got my main chord bits that I I want. Um, you can see here now what I did is I went okay. No worries. Um, now I'm going to um, pull up a, a scale and as a MIDI effect. So. Um, same thing, Scalar, but this time it's controlling third-party instruments. You can see I've got it here as a MIDI effect, and I've opened up Contact below it, so it can trigger Contact. Now, if I pull up Contact, in Contact I've pulled up Ascend Modern Grand Piano from Heaviosity, which is a nice little piano with some really nice harmonics to it. And I've simply just dragged down that first channel of chords um, that I copied. I've dragged it down, so now I've got my original uh, scalar playing its internal piano. I've got scalar now triggering heaviosity and I've got ethereal. So really nice, I got that harmonic element. I kind of need that melodic element and the bass. 
Okay, so now I'm going to load up a base. I'm going to come down here um, in a base grouping and I'm going to load up Carbon Electra. Okay, great little synth from Plugin Boutique, which I was fortunate enough also to be involved in. I'm going to go load, I'm going to go factory uh, base, and I'm going to pull up the Juno base preset. I could play my own base notes. I know that Scalar has told me by looking at those blocks that I was playing a C, an E, an A, and a B. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Scalar to create that rhythm. Um, so I'm going to assign it um, as a MIDI effect. So now it is controlling that carbon electro patch. And what I'll do is I'll pull down the notes of the, uh, of the actual chords that I captured from Scalar. Uh, now I don't want to be feeding these uh, chords straight into um, a monophonic bass patch, um, but I know that um, Scalar was telling me, if we look back at Scalar, it was, yeah, it was telling me that I was triggering C, E, A flat, and B flat. Okay, so cool. So um, now if I come down to Carbon Electro and I've dragged that, well, that's what those chords are, uh, C. So I just get rid of all the kind of chordal elements. Um, uh, yeah, that was my E flat major. This was actually my A flat major, so I'm just going to leave the A flat there. Um, and then my B flat. That's pretty much what the chords were doing. Um, and then ending back up on a C. So cool, yep. So if we come back down to the Carbon Electra, um, pull up the Carbon Electra patch again and see that they're the notes I'm triggering. Okay, let's have a listen in isolation. Okay, cool. Um, what I'd like to do though, is since Scale is controlling it, I'm going to ask Scalar to um, give it a rhythm. Um, and that's one of the great things about the performance mode is it doesn't have to just be for the internal chords or even external chords. It can actually be for external single notes or monophonic bass instruments. So let's pull up rhythms. I've got andante, intermedio, presto, and volante. Always going, these performances, phrases, and rhythms, you don't have to understand Italian, but they're effectively always going from slowest to fastest or mellowest to liveliest, if you like. So I'm going to pull up rhythms. I could go volante fast, and now... Yeah, so you can see um, all the different rhythms. Now, one of the nice things here in the expressions in um, Scalar is I can always multiply them, um, and I can always halve them. Yeah, I'm going to go back to its normal state. Here we go. Uh, let's see how that bass is now working. I'll turn it up for you so you can hear it clearly. Yeah, it's great. Um, I, I did, uh, I added some percussion earlier on. Cool, so you can see there that it, um, uh, I pretty much got most of the things I need, um, but I need some a melody. So what I'm going to do is Given that these are my original voicing, I'll unsolve everything else and just leave this guy um, here. Uh, if I pull, duplicate that channel, okay. And in my right hand, it'll just play um, the normal notes of a piano, as you can hear. Okay, so cool, I'd either have to come up with my own melody and understand the scale. It's pretty straightforward. I'm in a C minor scale. But actually, I want Scalar to help me with some melodic suggestions based upon the chords that I'm playing here in my left hand. Okay, so now I'm going to come up to Scalar and I'm going to turn on a feature which I love, which is Keys Lock. Now, I can either um, 
lock it to the notes of the scale. So you can see there, as I said, that was a C minor, but if I was to come up and hit the third, major third, it would come up and say, no, that's the wrong key, and you can see it fitting it back down here to this correct key. Okay, that's cool. Um, I can even make it go white keys. Oh, okay, he told me it's this, but can you just lay them all out in the white key? So, so it's effectively playing whatever scale I want. It's only going to play on those white keys. That's great. There's two new features in Scalar 2, which I really love, chord notes and chord extensions. Chord notes will simply, um, if I trigger a chord, you can see up on Scalar, it's going to say, I'll just play those um, just the notes of that chord okay as the chord has four notes yep and I could move up yes yeah, so it's a really cool way to just keep playing these same notes here and just move the chord up and down and just locks it to the chord in your left hand genius way of coming up with melodies but I'm gonna go chord extension so it's gonna give me a few more options if I was to hold C, you can see here up on Scalar, it's actually given me an octave full of um, potential options. So yeah, so it's basically given me the seven notes which would make up the the extensions of that C minor chord. Without getting too complicated, um, or without getting too complex, let's just say that it's a more extensive way of making melodies, okay, based on the chord that you're playing, rather than just the chord notes. So for example, I'm going, um, um, remember my chord uh, is um, C minor, C minor, different voice C minor, E flat major into the A flat major into the B flat major and back to the C minor. So let's say I want to do some melodies. Let's let's um, just you know play around with these notes based on what I'm I'm playing. So I could go and then come back down to the next C minor. And go to the E major, E flat major. E flat major again, up to the A flat major, up to the B flat major, and finish again on the C minor. Yeah, cool. So that's a really nice melodic line based on the chords that I'm playing. And you can see I'm just, I'm hitting around these notes. Uh, if I do it a little bit quicker, Yeah, so really I'm playing three, I'm only playing these three notes in a different order. And by whatever I'm triggering on my left hand, it's moving what these, changing what notes these three will play. Um, what's really cool about it is Scale is now giving me, I can see up on screen, if I go to the C, it's basically playing it and locking it into octaves, right? So these are the seven extensions of the chord and then an octave above. So now I can easily play octaves to make it much more interesting. So in other words, I can play this C or that C. I can play this D sharp or this D sharp. Yes, I know I'm playing a D here, but the point is, is that I'm in the, the um, C minor scale, so scale is warping that sound. Uh, let's do it up here so it's a bit more obvious. Uh, e flat major, so I can play the D, D sharp or the E flat here or an octave above. So if I go back to that melody now, I can make it slightly more interesting. I could go into the E flat major and come down this way.
use the octave again. Yeah, so it's a really cool way of just being able to come up with these melodies and then going, okay, now I'll just change the octaves because really that's what all great melodic lines are about. Simplicity, fitting to the chords, um, plus using the octaves. Scale is infinitely versatile here, so what I want to do is rather than play the chord and record the chord and the melody, I only want to record what's happening in my right hand because I've already recorded the chords on another channel. So I can come up to Scalar, I can go into Settings, I look for Keys, like, there it is, Chord Extensions Mode, yep, that's the mode that I'm in, uh, Chord Mute, Unmuted. I'm going to mute it. So now if you have a look, when I trigger my left hand, Scalar itself is not playing the chord. So I can still use to trigger what notes it's going to play in my right hand but not record the actual chord and that's absolutely fantastic for what I want to do here which is recording over the chords but record the melody only. Here we go. So there you go, I've recorded that. You can see Scalar's playing those notes. Let's pull them up so we can have a look. Yep, now you can see that it's just actually just recorded it um, where I wanted, where I actually recorded it. Now Scalar can also help with the timing because what I could do is I could select them all. Um, I could quantize it straight onto 16ths. Yep. Um, pretty straight, um, or I could actually say to Scalar, hey, at the same time, can you humanize, yep? So either the timing, the velocity, or let's say I'm gonna go both. Great, so that's given me a more natural feel. Now if I was to MIDI capture everything with a humanize on, um, it'll actually give me only these notes humanized. So let's go ahead, let's MIDI capture. Great, stop, and now if I drag that down, let's drag it straight down here, and let's have a look. Yeah, fantastic. It's, it's actually, you can see here, um, it's giving me a really nice, no chords, just the actual melody, and you can see it's giving me a really nice variation on where they land, um, and also um, the velocity of each one. First thing to note is that I've actually dragged it um, back on to another instance, a different instance of the Ascend Modern Piano from Heaviosity. Okay, so I've got a different sound, uh, melody from Scalar. Great, plus the pads, so let's do this Let's do this one by one, shall we, so we can hear everything, okay? The original chords. Great. Um, so then I dragged them down and I added, uh, I dragged, MIDI captured the chords and I brought it over to my ethereal patch, um, which was here. Right, and then I took um, Scalar I, uh, and C minor voicing, but this time I, I loaded it as a MIDI effect to control contact. Um, and in contact, I opened up the uh, Ascend Modern Piano. Um, so same trigger notes, triggering exactly the same thing as my first voicing six, but now doing it with a different instrument. And then I took the bass notes of those chords, assigned it to Carbon Electra, and in Carbon Electra you can see I also put on Scalar as a MIDI effect. I did nothing here except to say just turn on the performance and do tempo, which is basically just making that rhythm.
Great. Uh, and then my final stage there was to create a melody. So I uh, basically I brought on that C minor voicing here, didn't I? Um, and I turned on keys lock and I turned on chord extensions. I played that melody and then I MIDI captured and dragged it across to another heaviosity um, channel here. I dragged the MIDI notes. So they were the, that was the melody. And um, the final things I did really were pretty straightforward things. I just added drums and percussion. And the final thing for me was just to add some vocals. So here, I basically just chose effectively the notes of the melody, assigned them to a vocal instrument. And you can see that Scalar has effectively been responsible for creating the chords, the melody, and the bass line. Yeah, you can see, so basically this is my whole track here. I started off with the original chords, um, just the chords of Scala, um, MIDI captured down to a different patch, um, got some basic drums at the start, and then we jump in and we go into uh, the first drop, if you like, into the new chords, uh, into the MIDI captured chords onto Ethereal. Um, Then the next thing I do is introduce the bass. Uh, and then for the main chorus part, I've effectively got everything going in. I've got the vocal and I've got the melody. And I just, I just use, basically, I just use a few variations throughout the tunes. Percussion and out, usual stuff. Uh, and then back into, back into the original chords. Um, so yeah, so good example of how I use Scalar to um, inform um, me of the harmonic and melodic content in terms of chords, variation on those chords, uh, how I extrapolate a melody and a bass line.